Well, good morning and welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer and this is a country life. Say good morning, Joe, you too. Morning. Good morning. <laughs> it is 1030 here and I just thought that I would do another freeze out. Freeze out. I thought I would do another freezer clean out video. You guys all seem to really, really love the last one. This one, <coughs> This one is gonna be a bit different. I don't have a whole lot in this upstairs freezer anymore because we did get it cleaned out. And then over the last couple of weeks, I've kind of been using little bits here and there as well. But I thought what I would do is this would be like meals without a meal plan. So just going to my freezer, just doing what so many people do, right? We don't always have meal plans. Sometimes we just go to the freezer, grab what we have, and we turn it into something that our family is going to love. So I have, oh, that's leaking. Okay, now I have a mess to clean up. I had some lunch meat. You may remember back, God, I think it was in April sometime, I had gone to pick and save and they had tons of lunch meat on Markdown, so I just grabbed a whole bunch of it, popped it in the freezer, and I've just been using it little bits here and there. And so today I was like, hey, I think I should make some ham and cheese sandwiches. These are, this is in cookbook number one on page 31. This is the food stand, like the 4-H food stand ham sandwiches. I already kind of started putting it together, but here's what I had. I had the ham in the freezer, and so I pulled that out. I can't step over here. Well, maybe I can just do this. Do you guys ever wash your floor just by throwing a wet washcloth down? Why isn't it focusing? And then sliding it around like that. And then I just go and throw this into the wash. I don't know why it's not focusing. And that is now washed. I have a variety of cheese. In the fridge here, I had some half pepper jack, half Colby jack, some sliced, some cheddar sliced. I'm gonna use all of those. I know the recipe calls for Swiss, that's okay. I had some hamburger buns here. I think I have nine, yes, nine hamburger buns. And then I just put together, I'm not even gonna do this on the stove top. I'm just gonna melt it in the microwave like this. So some butter, and this isn't the whole recipe because I don't have enough buns to do the whole recipe. So I just kind of sized down the Worcestershire sauce, the Dijon mustard, and the onion flakes, the minced onion, as well as the poppy seeds. I'm gonna get this melted, assemble everything on here, ham, cheese, bun, pour it all over, and then this is just gonna sit in the fridge for about an hour until it's time to make lunch. So uncovered. 350 degrees for just a little over 15 minutes. Actually at the 15 minute mark, what I did was just turn off the oven and then they were in for a couple more minutes after that. I'm gonna get these served up with some apple slices and then that's gonna be our first use it up from the freezer lunch. You all have seen my kids' dinner plates. Rarely are they perfectly balanced with all the necessary vitamins to nourish their growing bodies. And I'm guessing your children or your grandchildren are the same way. That's why I teamed up with Haya, a daily children's vitamin that's cleaner and tastier and always with zero added sugar and zero gummy junk. 93% of kids today don't eat enough fruits and veggies. Haya vitamins are pediatrician approved, chewable, and taste great. Maria actually asks every morning if she can take her vitamins, so you know it's got to be good. She's the pickiest one of my bun in my bunch. Haya is pressed from 12 fruits and vegetables, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, folate, zinc, and so many more. One small chewable, which that is one of the things my kids love the most, is that it's just one for kids age two and up. One small chewable helps to support immunity, brain function, mood and concentration, as well as strong teeth and bones. Do your kids or grandkids a favor and get Haya vitamins delivered straight to their door. Haya is offering my viewers 50% off your first purchase. Go to HayaHealth.com slash a country life or click the link in the description box below. Your first month comes in a reusable glass bottle. Your kids can personalize with stickers. And every month thereafter, Haya sends a refill pouch with fresh vitamins. Thank you to Haya for sponsoring this portion of today's video. 
Good morning everybody. Let's get started with meals of the week. Today I am going to be putting in a chuck roast. We, I was looking through the freezer and I found this kind of buried deep. It's probably a couple of years old, but it's been in the very bottom of my deep freeze. Anyway, we're going to go with a chuck roast. It is rock hard. I'm gonna, I already have my crock pot set to high and I will probably cook this on high for about four hours before turning it to low. I have some little, like, I think these are Yukon gold potatoes. I have some carrots that are looking a little bit old, um, pepper, a couple of brown gravy packets. I'm going to mix those in with only a half cup of water because I know that this roast is gonna make quite a bit of juice. And then I have a garlic clove that I'm going to uh, just throw in there for flavor. And that's that's it. That's it, it's gonna be so easy. And I'm gonna give it plenty of time to slow cook today. And it's gonna be a nice tender roast for supper tonight. So at about five hours in, I turned it from high down to low, and now it is about seven hours in. And I just came over and I pulled the, oh, sorry, it's starting to steam up. I pulled out the chuck roast. There was two bones and then sort of like a hunk of cartilage. I pulled all of that out, tried to pick off most of the fat, and I just put all the meat back in here. And I've just been spooning the gravy over the meat and the potatoes just to make sure that it gets nice and uh, juicy. We're going to serve this up with some fruit tonight for supper and bread and butter. You're hungry, huh? Thank you. I am back. Another day of supper. And tonight we are going to be making something called hamburger quiche. I've never made this recipe. I'm interested to see how this is going to turn out. Um, so I do have to start with a pie crust. And I do not have any pie crusts in the freezer. I normally do, so I'm just making up a real quick pie crust here. Just some shortening, some flour, some salt, and I'll be putting in a little bit of ice water here in a moment. Um, but I just have to get this blend mixed up so I can roll it out and get it put into my pie plate.
For the hamburger quiche, I have a half a cup of mayo in here. So this is one pound of browned venison burger I'm using and a half cup of mayo. I have a half a cup of milk, a tablespoon of cornstarch. Next, I'm going to add in one and a half cups of shredded cheddar cheese and two eggs. Just a little bit of onion, a teaspoon of salt. All right, well this was a bummer. I thought I had broccoli in the freezer that I had froze last, last summer, but I'm out. So um, there'll be no broccoli in our quiche. I don't think anyone's gonna really mind, except for me. <laughs> but I'm gonna get this all mixed up and get this poured into my pie crust. We're gonna get this baking at 375 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, well right off the bat, it seems a little bit runny to me, but I have to remember there is a tablespoon of cornstarch in here, so hopefully as it bakes up, it um, thickens up and that that like sets up a little bit more. And there are two eggs in here as well. I guess that's the quiche part of it, right? All right, what do you got going on, Maria? So there's three options of noodles. So there are these. So we have wide egg noodles. elbow macaroni and cream, I don't know what that means. Cremette. Cream it. Is that like on there? Uh, on the noodle? What you mean the parsley? Or like that what is cremet? Cremet is the brand. Ah. So that's a brand. But Family tradition these... since 1912. There's little lines. This is I think you pronounce this cavatappi. And there's like just little little ridges on the noodles. So I can use whichever one you want. I think this one be cool because it's like I've, there's sometimes wow. curly noodles, but these are yep. like really curly. Okay, these well let's go cool. with that. So along with the hamburger quiche, Maria has requested noodles or mac and cheese with cheese. Oh my God, mac and cheese. So she's requested that, so that's what we're gonna do along okay. with the hamburger quiche. Well, lucky for my family, I'm also going to be making a new recipe tomorrow night. And I was thinking that what we will do is Warren and I'll sit down again at the end, like we did after the three pork chop um, recipe supper or video. And what we'll do is we'll just kind of talk over these recipes and whether they're the new recipes or recipes that I've always made. It will just kind of chit chat about it like we did last time. I just thought that would be fun. I know that you guys uh, gave that video just a lot there were a lot of comments from all of you that you enjoyed that take on it and everything so i thought we'd do it again why i was showing you the onions is because for tomorrow's um supper hi joe hi how are you good you haven't shown up in a video in a while yep it's been a while and look yes. at you're taller than me you are taller than me i even have shoes on Huh? I have shoes on and you're taller than me. Oh. All right, well, I don't even know what I was saying because he's just such a great distraction. Um, I think I was saying the whole reason I was showing you the onions is because I got the onions already sliced for tomorrow's supper. I looked ahead, I had the onion out, and I thought, why put it away without slicing it for whatever is coming next? Because, you know, since I'm in the kitchen, I might as well get kitchen things done. Pan it, onion, <laughs> see ya. We're not done yet. We're not doing perfect either. <laughs> So for the homemade mac and cheese, I did something a little different this time. Uh, what I did, well, first I'll tell you what I, what I would normally do. Normally, I would just boil up my pasta, whatever I want, drain all of the water off, add in some salt or some seasoned salt, and then some shredded, <laughs> sure, and some shredded cheese and some milk, and then just stir it. The cheese would get pretty stringy, and sometimes it even would get a little bit gloppy, that didn't seem to bother anyone. We, I mean, we, we like cheesy noodles. <laughs> um, but this time what I did is I actually mixed a tiny bit of flour and milk, a quarter cup of each. And when I drained the pasta water, I left just a little bit on the bottom and then I stirred in the that slurry, the flour milk slurry. And then I added in a couple cups of cheese and some salt and stirred and stirred and it is so creamy mm -hmm. just different 
it's so very good. different. It's very, very good. We I just added regular salt, and we might still add in just a tad um, seasoned salt. Season salt. I always like it on my mac and cheese. Seasoned salt, maybe when like when we serve it on our plates. Yeah, that's right? what I'm gonna do okay. on my plate. And then here is the hamburger quiche. I'm just gonna let that set up for probably 10 minutes here. So I better cover this so this doesn't get hot or it doesn't get cold. And we're just gonna let that set up for about 10 minutes before cutting it. Well, here we are for the next day of meals of the week and, and kind of also just cleaning out freezers and and you know, just trying to cook from my freezer is basically what I'm saying. And just kind of trying to cook without a meal plan. A couple nights ago when I was looking through my freezers and my pantry, I was just kind of looking at some different ingredients and then I went to this cookbook again, Extension Homemaker Cookbook, and I found this recipe for hamburger vegetable hot dish and I just thought, let's give it a try. It's all ingredients that I have. So potatoes and rice, and I already browned the ground the ground venison yesterday, I sliced up the onions yesterday, I have some carrots in the freezer, water, cream of chicken soup, salt, and a little sugar. I'm also going to add some pepper just because we like pepper. So I'm going to layer all of that up and then it has to go at 350 degrees for an hour and a half. It does not say covered or uncovered, but I'm guessing covered. We have raw potatoes in there. They're really going to need um, all of that steam. <laughs> They're going to need all the steam to cook all the way through. I'll check it when there's a half hour left and we'll decide if we're going to leave the foil on or if we're going to remove it. All right so right after the potatoes I'm putting on a half a cup of uncooked rice and this actually is jasmine rice and then I have the one pound of browned uh, ground beef or in my case ground venison just going to kind of spread that out so it's even across. Now I have my onions that I cut up from yesterday. Oops, we're just going to get these onions just spread across here as well. Mm, those onions smell so good. I have a bag of frozen carrots. Um, leftover from when Emily and I did our freezer meal cooking. So just to make this easy, I should have banged the bag a little bit to get these separated. It just says the recipe calls for one layer sliced raw carrots. So I don't know how many. <laughs> oh, they're sticking to my wet fingers. I'm not going to put too many in just because I'm just not going to because I, I know that some of my kids are going to want to pick those out. So that's it for carrots. Then next up it's two cups of water. The recipe does not say anything about mixing the soup and the water. It just says put everything in in the order given. So that is what I'm doing. Next up is a can of cream of chicken soup. just going to spread that out as best I can. I'm I'm positive now that I that this needs to be covered because if it wasn't covered, this cream soup on top would start to brown, I think in kind of a weird way. I am pretty sure this is even though the recipe doesn't say, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be covered. And we need a teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to go back and forth, sprinkling that across. I didn't season the meat at all, and venison can always take a teaspoon per pound. And it also calls for a teaspoon of sugar. A lot of times tomato-based recipes will call for a little sugar. I've actually never seen this, but there we go. And I said I was going to pepper it even though the recipe doesn't call for it. 
At this point, I'm going to foil this, and I do have about an hour before I need to put this in the oven for supper, so I'm just gonna set it on top of my stove. That's gonna help the carrots thaw, but I'm just gonna foil this, set it on the stove for the hour that I'm down in the garden. I'll be popping back in to get this into the oven. It has to go for a full hour and a half. There is some rice, yeah? There's potatoes, rice. I thought I saw mashed potatoes. Mom, mom. Oh, ceramic. Yes, I see yours, Joe. It looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yep, thanks. We got your thumb in there. And Maria, she's gonna try with a teaspoon of meat. <laughs> a teaspoon. This is called a hamburger vegetable hot dish. Yippee. Yippee. <laughs> Tonight for supper, I'm going to be making a black bean chicken nachos um, in, the, in the Instant Pot here, or electric pressure cooker. And what I have in here is, this is a little over three pounds of chicken, and so I'm going to be putting in a full jar of salsa and a full can of black beans. I'm also going to put in about a, uh, one cup of corn, but mine is, of course, frozen. So I'm going to put this, um, what am I going to do? I think I'm going to just microwave it enough just until I can like break off a chunk. And I'm just going to try to break off like a little section like this. All right, and while that corn is starting to thaw, I do have some green peppers here. It wasn't three cups, it was only a partial bag, so I would say one cup of green peppers. I'm also going to get these three mini red peppers chopped and put those in. At this point, I'm gonna put the lid on, or not. Okay, come on. Oh, that's not gonna do it. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that it's set to seal here, and I'm just gonna hit the poultry button that's 20 minutes at almost high heat. So I did have to put the chicken in for another five minutes past the poultry button, which was 20 minutes. So I did another five minutes, and then it shredded perfectly, I think. Warren shredded it, yes? It shredded perfectly? Yeah. Yeah, okay and this is what it's looking like so we just have some chips with the yeah the chicken cheese sour cream and we haven't tasted it yet no <laughs> let's just see how it's going to be here You don't remember hamburger quiche? No. Oh my goodness. I think, Am I, I going to have to explain all these meals to you again? Well, you know, <laughs> it's been a while. It has been a while. Okay, so Warren and I are up here. I don't even know what this is called. This is our sand pile. Our sand pile. So we are way up in the air. I don't tree know. Treetop level. Yeah, treetop. I don't know if you guys can tell that. It's and the high up here. camera is just like balancing in a goofy position. But this, we It'll thought. Work maybe we would have less distractions. If you guys remember the last time that we sat down together, we talked about pork chops. Yes. <laughs> that one. Weren't there firearms being shot? Firearms were getting shot in the background. It was something else. So anyway. Chipmunk control. I thought that we would sit down here <laughs> and talk about these meals that we just had. These meals. And first off, so 4-H, 
food stand ham sandwiches. You were not here. You were actually gone fishing that day, and I made those. You know for, that explains why I don't remember them. Right, and I made them that day because I know that's not one of your favorites. Yeah, not really. Warren is a meat and potatoes lover. Well, and chili, mm -hmm. and hamburgers, mm -hmm. and venison and, uh, steak. Kung Pao chicken. Kung Pao chicken. <laughs> okay, so I have a much wider variety of things that I like to eat. Yes, you do. <laughs> but he, he puts up with it. So I made the 4-H food stand ham sandwiches um, when he was gone because I know that Joe loves oh, yeah. those and Maria loves those and I love them. So it was perfect and we enjoyed those. Mm -hmm. But that's not one of your favorites. I'm not, I, I'll eat them. You will eat them. And I always make them during cranberry harvest because I can make a lot of them and pop I'll, them in the oven. I'll eat anything during cranberry anything harvest. Anything during cranberry harvest. And when all of our older kids were still living at home and they were working cranberry harvest, if they all like came in at lunchtime and they asked, Mom, what are we having for lunch? And I said, 4-H ham sandwiches. They were like, yes. They were, they were so happy. Mm -hmm. And this is like too close. Is it too close? It's too close. Is it bothering you? It's bothering me. There is a handle right there too. Oh, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. So then the next meal that we had were, was the beef chuck roast with potatoes and carrots. Do you remember that? Yes. I liked the chuck roast myself. I know you did. And I always like cooked carrots and potatoes, so it was a good one. I yeah. liked it. I liked it too. It was a good one. Of course, the kids kids mm, didn't care for it. Well, Joe they kind of picked through it. Joe, Joe, loves, Joe it. loves it. He loves meat. But Maria and Peter kind of picked through and ask how many carrots they have to eat mm -hmm. and and how much roast and yeah, they, typical. They've seen their plates. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. they know. Next up, we had the hamburger quiche. That was a brand new recipe. I'm having a hard time remembering. This so one. I made a pie crust. The pie crust was a bit dry I, mm -hmm. and not enough flavor. Actually, I needed I remember, more salt. Do you remember that? Yes. I needed more salt in the pie crust. But otherwise, it had like the egg and it had potato. No, did it have any I kind think, of potato? I think it had. I think no, it, no, it did not. I remember it being a lot like a pot pie or like a beef yeah. potato pie. It was very I good. I can't really remember it very well either. But I know I really liked it. Yes, it I was, was good. I was a little iffy. I didn't have the broccoli. Do you remember that? I said it was supposed to have yeah. broccoli. Yeah, it wasn't a huge disappointment for <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Although was... I, I like broccoli. I mean, you'll eat it. You'll yeah, eat it. Let me, yeah, I'll eat it. Okay, then the layered potato hamburger hot dish. That was That good. was also a brand new recipe. And that was one that when, when you were eating it and when you look back at this video, you went, yippee, because you were like, oh, great. New but recipe. Then, but then Yay. you were the first person to say, you're this like, really wow, good. this is really good. Mm -hmm. And I didn't it even have yummy. to ask him. I yep. didn't even have to say, what do you think? Yep, it was yummy. That one was really good. I would definitely make that again. That was good. I'll leave both the hamburger quiche and the layered potato hamburger hot dish recipe. I'll leave that in the description box because those were both new recipes just out of some... I think they wrote them in extension homemaker cookbooks. And then the last recipe in this video was another brand new one. It was an instant pot recipe. It was chicken, black bean, and corn nachos, which of course I absolutely loved because I love that kind of thing. You love anything with black beans. Anything. Anything. <laughs> the camera is like, Ugh. Oh, sorry, my bad. Here, my arm's getting tired. I I'm know. holding it up here. I know. Here, yeah, you I'll hold, hold the this. paper. Sure. I have to fix this camera and grab it differently. There we go. <laughs> Let's see. Oh boy. How about that? Yeah, that's better. That's better. Is that better? So, um, here, I, I don't know. Let me. I, no. Okay. That's not gonna. All work. right. All right. So this anyway, what did you think? Reel. So the nachos were okay. Yeah. I mean, you ate them. I ate them. There was nothing off about them. It's you know, just. If you put food in front of me, I eat it. I, yes. I am never one to complain about yeah. food or turn down food. Right. I'll eat it. Even right. if I don't necessarily like it, I will eat it. You will still eat it. Mm -hmm. And at least once. Yes. At least once. It was it was good. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like on my top ten. Right, for sure. So oh, now I gotta put it up because we we're cutting my top of my head off. Top of your head off. What was your favorite out of here? Uh, definitely the layered potato hamburger hot dish. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And I would say that mine was definitely the chicken nachos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. much so that I made the chicken nachos again, which you'll, 
which you will see in another video actually like for our fourth of july a gathering i actually made the chicken nachos again because i liked it so well and i thought you know i think this will go over for a crowd everyone loved it mm -hmm. i had the hamburgers yep you had hamburgers there i cut my head off again mm -hmm. oh my gosh i know it gets this vlogging is so difficult mm -hmm. i know thank you guys so much for tuning in here to another episode of meals of the week i hope that you guys enjoyed this one i'll leave a couple more right here if you want to see some other uh, summertime meals that we've had and yeah this was kind of a fun quiet spot to film from i hope yeah. that you guys enjoyed this and we're going to give you a little look around just because it's such a neat view from here you guys have a fantastic day take care Bye. Bye.